Good. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. We're going to go through some stuff we've probably been through, but, you know. No, we, yeah, we actually haven't done a, a ton of a ton of work yet, like a ton of press stuff back home. So it's all pretty fresh for me. I mean, we just finished the record. Yeah. When did you finish it? Yeah, a month ago, okay. maybe. My mixing and everything, it must have been a month. And you already got time to release two videos. Yeah. Pretty quick. Oh. Yeah, that's like my favorite stuff to do. So, videos? Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't like being in them as much, but I love, I love music videos, so I think they're cool. Yeah, there, there's one that is like um, Alaska by Night. Yeah. For Avon Friends. And, uh, and the other one, I don't know, there's a message in purple. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, there is, but... Do you mind explaining it to us? It's all subtleties. You want me to talk about it? Please. Um, I mean, really, when, when you go out to make a music video, you bring on directors or uh, Michael Reagan, who's he's normally a DP and a cinematographer, but he'll come up and shoot videos for us. Like, he shot Guns and Dogs, People Say, The Sun, Do You, Evil Friends, Purple, Yellow, Red, and Blue, and Modern, Modern Jesus, which isn't out yet. All of, all of the videos have meaning to them. I mean, that's what directors do when they write out these treatments. It's not good directors aren't just throwing out a group of ideas and just slamming things together. I think that go, uh, Stefan and Noel, Noel Paul, who actually lived out here for quite a while. He's done a lot of videos out here. He did videos for The Doe and uh, Bat for Lashes. They've done a lot of things. But they're just funny, funny guys. They, they think about things a lot deeper than most people I hang, I hang out with. And they're a really good balance to each other. They definitely put something together that, I don't know, I heard from some people that it could be offensive to some Americans, I guess. Again. But, I mean, whatever. the Americans. I mean, I'm American. I, I'm, I'm very patriotic. I think you have to represent where you're from, and there's always a downside to everywhere. It's not like any one place is better than anywhere else. And I think you have to point that out sometimes. What's the message in purple? Um, what did you want to say? It's more about what they wanted to say, and that's why I don't really go into it too much, because that's, that's for the director. Every band needs a director. I always think it's funny when, I mean, musicians, pop stars get in trouble for videos all the time, like things that really don't mean anything to them a lot of the time. I mean, we're very tied in with that, that process. And I'll still say it's, it's their video. So this new album is much darker than the precedent. So I don't know, do you want to go into that and maybe explain the third eye thingy that I didn't get. Yeah. <laughs> the, the new record, I guess Evil Friends, is a lot darker than stuff we put out in the past, but it was m more about the time and the place and what we, we had been working on. It's, we, had a, we had a lineup change. We had a keyboard player who really needed to do his own thing. It's not like there was a big fight that led to this point. He is creative on his own, and I write a lot of songs. And it's very hard to have creative control when you work with a group of people. I mean, I, I know he, he felt kind of stifled by this, and he needed to go out and do his thing. But because of that, I needed to take a step back, give him time to do what he wanted, and also just figure out where I wanted to take things. It's kind of a good ex excuse, I guess. There's an excuse to take a break. But in, in retrospect, I just wanted to get out and play music, and I wanted it to be loud, and I wanted it to be heavy. And part of working with somebody like Brian Burton, who is Danger Mouse, is he has these, he has melodies in his head. He, he doesn't have like a, the bag of tricks, or like the go-to keyboard, or drum machines. 
though a lot of people think he does. I mean, it was very, very cool to have some insight and look into that and see that Brian's just a, a guy making music and that's how he hears music. And when you work with somebody like that, there's such a giant presence. So he's, I mean, he is an icon in so many different ways, very progressive. I think that combination brought out a lot of my melodies that, that I had, as well as some of the, the stuff that we have been going through. So yeah, of course it's gonna be a little bit darker. We had a, a lot of changes happen, and when you go out and play live, sometimes you wanna be a heavier band, bigger, heavier band. I'm actually glad you didn't take over your sound, because that's always, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's always, you know, a stress. But um, how, how did that happen, really? How, how did you score Danger Maps? Well, actually, I, we were on tour with the Black Keys um, January of last year. And Patrick had just mentioned it. Like, he walked by our dressing room, and he, like, peeked in, and he goes, you know, nodded for me to come out. I went out there, and he goes, so what are you working on right now? Are you guys making a new record? I know you guys are always making new records. He's like, I see the, I see the tour posters and see all that stuff. I, I know you're working on something. And he just kind of mentioned Brian in passing. Like it, it, wasn't, it wasn't really even on our list because, I mean, he's Danger Mouse. So you, you can't expect that you're going to get that. Like we had him on our list four years ago, five years ago. And no way. Like he just wouldn't be a guy that would, would do that with us. I mean, we just didn't know. But so, somehow we got connected. It, it was the, the label talked to him, management talked to him. Like it, it was a lot of those things. But he can pick and choose who he works with. And he's smart the way, the way he works. I mean, he really loves music. And he's not going to make a record just to make a pop record. I think the reason he's had so much success is because he's such a huge music fan. And that's where we really connected. Like, I went over to his place and right when I got there, the way I remember it happening was I opened the door, or like he opens the door, says hi. Hey, just so you know, I don't really want to make a record with a band. You know, I got, a, I got the Black Keys. I just brought up all these points and I just felt such relief. <laughs> It's like, thank God he doesn't want to work with us. Like this, this interview that we're going to have is going to be so stressful. So it wasn't even anything like that. We just listened to music all day and listened to stuff that you just would not expect him to play. I mean, he has a pretty deep record collection, like very, very cool stuff. But we listened to music the whole day, and as I was leaving, he goes, you know what, we should, we should make a record together. I walked out the door so confused. <laughs> I called the band and was like, hey, uh, I think he wants to work together. I, I don't know. I, I think he does. But I mean, we didn't know until like three months later. We decided to go into the studio. So you convinced him by hanging out and listening to music. That's pretty cool. Kind of, you know, he, he made some points. I actually asked him, because he had talked about In the Mountain, In the Cloud quite a bit. And he had said that he just really loved that record. And I asked him if he had heard stuff before, and he said he had, but he hadn't really like, paid attention as much. And he kind of said to me that there's like, something that I always felt, like there's this weird perception of our band. Like some people expect us to be this heavy band. And some people expect us to be this indie band. There's just so many conflicting ideas of what this band is. And this band is just about music. And that's all we really care about. I think he, he probably saw that when I went to his place and we just listened to music. Yeah, it's really confuse people because sometimes you say you're really into Motown, then you say like, Wooten Clan was the band that actually like released everything. And, and then you, 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 this song, Hip Hop Kids, is not as hip hop as work all day that you've done like two albums ago. So 
I don't know, you really, and this, this album takes much more risks than the previous one. That it is really confusing. Yeah. Actually, I brought Hip Hop Kids here and in Germany. I started it here because my daughter Frances had come on tour with us. Um, we landed in France. We were in Paris for a week. And then I went out with the Black Keys. And I think writing that song, I was just thinking about, that's my daughter's first trip and she's hanging out in Paris and she's going to New York directly after this. And it was just such a ridiculous thing. Like it was so far from rock and roll or like, you know, those hip hop kids, like the backpack promoters and like that guerrilla style, like street promotion. Like it was so far from everything that I had known. I mean, it's very rock and roll in, in its own way because it is fully about music, especially with the Black Keys. Like they're a band that's about music. But um, the idea of standing in a buffet line to get food <laughs> before the concert was just, it was kind of my way of saying, this is about music I, and I don't, I don't care. I don't care what hip hop kids are doing or punk rock is or what rock and roll is. This band's about music. It's all music. Yeah, that's what you say about um, some people saying that you're trying to achieve, com achieve commercial success. And you're just saying that you didn't aim for anything, but, yeah, I, but you want to make the mainstream better. That's what I read. Oh, Zach said that? I, I think know. Zach I said, that. said that. Yeah, I remember I, I read that in something. I would seen a, a tweet or whatever that said, we're trying to make the mainstream better. I, love that. Catch I thought that was the coolest thing Zach could have said. <laughs> We're just trying to make it better. I think every band is trying to make the best music that they can, whether it's the noisiest, the loudest, or the best songs they can. I mean, everybody, for the most part, to a certain extent, I mean, there, there are definitely strictly like artists in there. There's performance artists. And that's a different world. But songwriters want to write the best music they can. And that's it. That's all I care about. I just care about writing good songs that mean something that aren't just a bunch of words thrown together to click with the present. Yeah, that's really nice. um, yeah I don't know. Um, yeah, no. You, you say, oh, well, you said, or maybe Zach said, I don't know, that this album was actually like influenced by or inspired by things like Dark Side of the Moon. Could you tell me again? You don't have to go down to yeah. to Pink Floyd. I mean, when we started the album, it was all Dark Side of the Moon. And it wasn't necessarily like a reference as a, an influence as much as it was us wanting to write a, a concept album. like. It's something that I always said I would avoid, I didn't want to do. And I mean, what better reason to do it? <laughs> I mean, I always said I wouldn't do it, so let's try and write this big, big album that just flows song to song. And we started that. I think Waves, which is number eight on the record, maybe? Okay. Is it number eight? Might maybe, be. Maybe number seven. No, seven is... Um, um, it might oh, be eight. Up air. Uh, sea of air. Sea of air. That's seven. So it might be eight. Yeah, yeah. I think it is a. I think so. Uh, that was the first song that we actually wrote for the album, and I was planning on starting off the the record with that song, but. Yeah, the it, intro is really. Yeah, turning. it's super epic. Yeah, true. <laughs> but we got into it, and it was like. It became a song, and it became something different. And I think that baseline and the way we, we came into putting together the second half of, the, of that, that particular song, it just felt really good. And from there, we wrote Modern Jesus, and then Atomic Man, and then Plastic Soldiers. This is the order that we actually wrote these songs. And you can actually see that progression kind of happening. If you, if you listen to them in that order, you can see we hit something on waves and it flipped what the record was going to be. So the Dark Side of the Moon thing 
you can go in with any idea, but it doesn't mean that's what you're walking out with. And I think we walked out with something better. I think we have, have a better idea of what we're doing. So it was like a, a click to help starting. Yeah. Yeah, everything just kind of came. A after, we, after we wrote that song, we got to the end of it, and we just said, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> that, was a, that was a cool experience, and it, it got us to where we needed to, to go. So it was more about where the songs were leading us than going in and saying, we're going to lead the way. Yeah. Because I read, but maybe that's wrong. That, I don't know, that was in Rolling Stone like two days ago. So is that you, you had a kind of an album and it's crashed it all, except two songs, and then you started again. I mean, like, feels familiar with the last album where we did with Gordon in seven different studios, and you know, yeah. you scratched everything, and you started all, all over again for like month and month. And yeah. What is that with the story at this point? Well, when, when I met Brian for the first time, we had actually started recording the album. It was right after that tour of the Black Keys. We went out and um, we went straight to El Paso, Texas, which is right on the border with Mexico. I mean, the fence is on the property. It's a really cool place. It's really kind of intense, but just really nice atmosphere. Fun to record there. When they told me that Brian wanted to meet up, I was actually really bothered by it because we were in the middle of the record. But I mean, you're not gonna pass up an opportunity. So we just finished out that time and went out to, I guess we went out to Los Angeles and we worked on something completely different. It was fun though, I, I'm glad we did it that way. And I think it's cool that we did keep two of those songs. I mean, listening back to it, there's some really, really cool stuff that we'll probably do something with at some point. But two of those songs Brian felt were completely like ready for the album and they fit the album and they fit the idea. They were the only two that we actually finished as well. So like when we found out Brian wanted to work with us, it was a lot harder to get everybody on the same page <laughs> because everybody knew when we went in, it would be writing every day. And that's what we did. We wrote a song a day at the beginning. And then Brian would say no and no yeah. and do that over. And yeah, my favorite part of the process was how easily Brian can say no, but how refreshing that is. Like it's so nice to have somebody say no because they believe in you and they know you can write something better. That's, that's an amazing thing. It's not like having an editor go through a paper you just wrote, and this is my piece, and then having them just go through it and cross everything out and change words, and like all that stuff. It's very much like, yeah, this is, good. This is pretty good, but you can do something better. It wasn't, it wasn't frustrating. Like it was just very supportive. Yeah, and inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So you don't fall back on your old. I mean, because it's the seventh album, so I guess you have some kicks or some. I don't know. I don't mean bags of tricks, but you fall back sometimes on some easy. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, there were definitely. Uh, there were so many times when I was writing songs, and I'd go, "There's that thing. We've done that before. Let's try and throw that in there." And Brian would be like, "No, oh, man, I've heard that. Let's just keep it moving." And that was cool. I mean, I want that. I want somebody to push me to write the best songs that I can. Because if I'm not, if I'm just rewriting stuff we've done, I don't need to do this. You know? I don't need to be there just to be there or just to make money on the next tour, whatever it is. I mean, who cares? I care less about that. It's gotta be music first. Yeah, and this one really I don't know, shows what you're... I mean, the last one was more to break, I guess, into Europe, you know, like to... Yeah. Make yourself heard. And now you can say, by the way, everything you thought we were, it's great, but... <laughs> yeah. That's what I like. Um, but, so, I guess it could be kind of... My last question, uh, it's been 10 years now. 
time, huh? Yeah, it's been 10 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Yeah, but you've been a band. Yeah. Yeah. Any lesson you've learned? Anything you don't oh, want yeah. to do? Oh, yeah. I got advice. I got lessons. No, no, not advice. Um, like, just stuff that you learned or stuff that you liked or, I don't know, any... Well, we've been a band for, for a long time. Zach and I played music together in high school. He taught me how to play bass. He, he taught me these things. I never wanted to go out and play music. I mean, I just really didn't because I, I like writing music. I like playing music for myself. I like doing those things. But being in front of people was not on my list of things to do. Like, there are plenty of people that do it well. And there still are. I still feel that way when I watch people perform. You can see it. Like you can see something like, if you know the group Haim, who, who sang on our record, those girls are rock and roll. Like That is rock and roll. I mean, I feel very privileged to be a part of all of this. And I feel very lucky to be a part of it. But we work hard. I mean, I would have worked hard if I was building houses or if I was playing music. That's the reason this band has made it as far as we have. It's like, it's common sense. Like, you work hard for something, it's going to happen. But you also have to be self-aware. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know what you're presenting. You have to be able to self-edit and go, all right, John, that's not good enough. You have to be able to see that stuff or it's, it's not worth it. I mean, we've been very, very privileged. I mean, we came here like, it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's a cool thing. But I, the only thing I've, I've learned out of all of it is it's really easy to get lost. It's, it's very easy to get lost. I mean, there's an actually, if you know Wood Kid, like an artist that lives here, like, he's amazing. I've never, honestly, I, I can't say I've ever met somebody that's so down to earth in a position like he is. I mean, it's, it's very cool. I saw that from the Doe as well, the, the girl, I don't know her name, but I watched her play in Los Angeles and you can see in some of these people the work ethic like she, she came to Los Angeles, they're playing, their monitors went out, and she was so upset, like in tears, upset. And you could tell she just cared about the music. That's all she cared about, it was presenting the best thing that she could. And it was so upsetting to her that she couldn't. We've met a lot of great artists. We've also met a lot of total assholes. <laughs> a lot of assholes. But there are some really great people out there as well. That's what I feel. I've just learned to find the, the good in, in people and stay away from everything else. I mean, we party. We still party. Okay, um, I think we're good. Do you want anything to add? Do you want to add anything? Did I forget anything? I think, I think I've said everything. Nice things. <laughs> Nice things, right? Yeah, nice things. I'll just Man. Say. I didn't, you know. The last interview I did, I did, I was like, on this tear about Liam Gallagher, because I love Oasis. Like, I, I, play, I heard one of his new songs, and it sounds so good. Uh, I'm, a, I'm Team Noel, so. Oh, me too. <laughs> so I was like saying all this bad stuff. I'm like, oh, he has to come in, right? Somebody has to say something about him. But, uh, Anything I say is just a, such a joke because I love everything they do. So, okay. didn't mean to say that on the record. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't care. I always say things. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, we need a drop. Sorry. Okay. We need like, um, uh, hey, you're watching. We love music. That fr. Hey, Anton from Fargo Man. We love music. That fr. Yeah. Cool. Right. <clears throat> we love music, right? Yeah, we love music. That's the fun. I'm really bad at this stuff. Are we ready right now? Yeah. 
Hi, I'm John from Portugal, Man, and you're watching WeLoveMusic.fr. I did it. Yeah, you did it. Whenever I do station IDs, I'm like, 